Welcome back. My guest is Jack Devnarain. He is the chairperson of the South African Guild of Actors, and he's the right person to talk to about the membership of the organization, about the ABC of the industry, and about how he has managed to be performing at the top of his game. He's still in the game, I, I would like to believe. Oh, yes. Yeah, Jack, tell me a bit more about the Guild and how many members you have, and I'm sure there are many more potential members who may not have known about this would like to join. What do they need to do? Yes, absolutely. We need to establish that the applicant has some background in performance. So we have different tiers of membership. Uh, student membership is free, so if uh, you have a fledgling performer coming through um, a recognized tertiary institution and or they can demonstrate that uh, you know they've been uh, working very hard in uh, community theater uh, networks then absolutely we provide some services and insights some guidance for them um, our associate members are those people who perform um, you know film tv uh, and uh, and theater but they don't use performance as a primary source of income and those are our associate members mm. and um, uh, they will be paying a nominal fee but again they get the, the professional insights and the guidance that they, that they would get from, uh, from Saga and of course our full members are those people who earn a regular income by being a professional performer and then they get the full whack and uh, that's what Saga is, we, we are a, a group of over 400 professional actors and our our system and governance is, is very soundly protected by our constitution. With, we are all volunteers. Uh, with your long experience in acting, especially television soapies, and many younger people would like to be like you, you see. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's why the South African public loves you so much, and, and you probably have fans all over the world. Mm. The ABCs of the industry, what are the key things to note if you want to become a celebrity like yourself? <laughs> I think I'm glad you raised that because. That's, that's part of the myth, I think, that you referred to earlier, is that people are captivated by the romance mm. of being a celebrity. Mm. And I actually, I, I tend not to believe in, in that because it takes away from the, the work that needs to be done in order to deliver um, your work as a performer. And you have to start with learning the craft. And once you understand the craft, you realize that no matter what your age and what stage you are at in your career, mm. you never stop learning. You're always trying to improve your skill. You're always trying to present um, and portray a different character with depth and intelligence and insight. And that's why you look at some of your best performers in the country and around the world and you, you think they, they create such meaning and depth in their performances, but they actually do so little to achieve that. Mm. That for me is the trick. So it's a reminder to all those young people coming into the industry. It starts off by learning the skills of performance and there's no other way around it. And you know, at some point, I suppose, through um, popularity and a growing body of work that you have, people might consider you a celebrity, but I would remind all those actors out there not to buy into that because our lives are um, a lot more disciplined and a lot more about hard work than walking the red carpet. But and I selfies. appreciate the hard work part of it. But if you have put in the innings, you've achieved so much and you are established as an actor, mm -hmm. that in itself should be something of value that you can exploit, exploit in your career. But it appears in the um, uh, South African context that that's not normally the case. Recently I spoke with John Gunny, just mm -hmm. to give perspective. Right. And he was saying, as much as he's been around for 50 years, but every time he gets onto a project, it's like a fresh start for him. Yes. So the fact that <clears throat> you are one of the popular people does not count for much in terms of how you negotiate for fees or how you get treated by the industry as compared to your counterparts, let's say, in the US or in the UK. What's the difference and why is that the case in the South African context? I think we've created a culture in our industry not to recognize the body of work of our of such legends as as Mr. Carney, uh, you know, I think firstly it does speak to his humility on one hand, but on the other hand, we have created a strategy not to position people where they would demand the fees that they are due. So we we are controlled in the way that our work is being exploited and and exposed in the media. So often you would have broadcasters who would exercise an undue control over a performer's body of work and they would say well we can see Jack is on this show and he's on that show but we don't think he should go and do that show because then he's overexposed yes, yeah, yeah. 
And up to now, and, nobody... And you don't get compensated for that fact all. that you are, you know, you are probably the key driving force behind the success of That's right. a particular show. And somebody's yet to define for me what does overexposed mean? What is that definition? Where did it come from? Because as a freelancer, I am working to be exposed. If I am not being exposed, I'm not earning mm. because that's all I'm getting. You know, and this is to return to what the bill is saying. Actors must be able to earn a residual, a residual income. That's what royalties are all about. So the more exposure I get, the more um, residual income I'll yeah, be yeah, able to yeah, receive yes. once that show is long off screen you know I'll, I'll i'll be able to earn right. my performance fee yes but as it travels around the world so i will be able to earn a small percentage of that which is unfortunately not the case in not in, in south, south africa, africa no. and it's almost built in into the how the industry works unfortunately but yeah. you did not set out to become an actor right away yourself no i go back <laughs> to your early days studying law and yes. becoming a police officer is it in case at end Yes, I was in okay. KZN in Well, you know, I can run a mini Moirani commission with you here and say, tell me <laughs> what's going on with the political killings. <laughs> I don't know if you, you know anything about those, but let's talk more about you being a law student, police officer, ultimately an actor yeah. who is leading other actors in the country. I realized that the experience I had um, as a public servant is what serves me today as chairman of Saga because it has got to be about service. And if it's not about service, then I shouldn't be anywhere close to the organization. Um, a position of leadership must assume that you are there as a volunteer and that you're willing to serve. Um, if there is any sense amongst the people who have mandated you to be their leader that you are there to eat their money, mm. you have lost credibility straight away. And I, I, I couldn't afford for that to happen in, in my life, in my career. I have successfully drawn on the skills that I have learned as a public servant, as a policeman and having studied law, I have been able to draft this into my work as a servant of actors. And that's who I am as, as Saga Chairman. I look at what's going on at, um, when we made our submissions to Parliament and I understand the process because I understand what governance is all about, mm. I understand protocol. Mm. And to be able to draft a report and follow up on that report, you know, and to maintain a line of communication. That, that all comes from my years as a policeman. So, so it served you well in that regard. Indeed. But notwithstanding the fact that you have left uh, Isidingo, you are still very much part of the acting world. What are you working on now? I'm happy to say that I now play a villain. <laughs> I play Sunil Maraj, yeah? who is the villain of Imbewu, which is the new soapy on ETV. And... Uh, He's a tremendous character, very dark, very conniving, very sly, very clever man. And uh, it's been quite liberating, I think, because for the first time I get to exercise that, uh, that evil muscle. <laughs> so, so you are working on the evil muscle so you can appreciate the good side of humanity. You've been, you've been recognized mostly as a, as a good guy who stands for something. Oh, yes. So it's, it's on already? Yes, that's right. At... Uh, at 9.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. I am so proud of the team that we have working. Uh, it's all shot on location in Durban. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling to be able to go back to Durban where, where my career started. And to think that I look at the level of skill amongst cast and crew and the writers, and I, I look at that collaboration and I think, I see our industry growing. And that's why it's become more important for me than ever to see that you know, the, 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 the regulations and the legislation that control our industry has got to keep up with the amazing well, talent we have. Let's hope the lawmakers will do the right thing and make sure that they come up with the appropriate laws and that the industry will respond accordingly. But the final yeah. question to you has got to do with the role that people like yourself play as you do your work without realizing. Giving us a sense that we're a rainbow nation, mm. that South Africa is reconciled. But when you listen to politi political talk in recent times, they... Economic freedom fighters, for instance, have yeah. said they've got problems with the Indian community. And you coming from that community, in a way, you've been a, a, a symbol, a representative of that community in the greater scheme of reconciliation. How do you feel about the tensions that exist now between no, the groups of people? But Tim, nobody can dispute that anecdotally, there are people who absolutely prove the EFF right. And 
I'm, I, I hate to say that I'm a poster boy for the Indian community in any way, mm. but I absolutely believe that it is, it is my work, my conduct, my interactions, my utterances, whether it's in studio or on social media, must be able to demonstrate the kind of vision that I have for an integrated South Africa. Um, if my efforts can help to describe what a national identity is that combines all colors, cultures and races, then that's what I must pursue and I must, I must lead by my own example. And everyone is entitled to, as the EFF is, um, to, to call out people on their racism. I do as well. And I think ultimately there must be a point to calling it out. What is the objective? And for me, we are stopping short. We are not going far enough to say that I'm calling you out because I want to achieve mm. integration and reconciliation. Jack Devnarain, everything of the best to you. And thanks very much for having been my guest. I enjoy talking to you. It's and I wish the industry well. Thank you. That's uh, Rajesh. <laughs> Jack, our guest on the show. And thank you for joining us on the Modise Network. And of course, the Twitter conversation, hashtag The Modise Network. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, 6 p.m as we bring you a special panel discussion on the South African economy. And from us, good night to you.